author, researcher and scientist Michael Tellinger has just filed his 1,100 page notice of motion against a Standard Bank in the Constitutional Court accusing the bank of unlawful and unconstitutional activity. He's also served the notice on the Reserve Bank and the Ministry of Finance here in South Africa. Joining us for more, Michael Tellinger. Michael, you've brought, what, you've brought the papers that you've served against uh, Standard Bank forward. You, we can see how bulky these are. Uh, let's just take a step back and, and get a perspective on why you've decided to take on South Africa's largest bank, apart from the fact that you're also uh, filing this motion against the Reserve Bank and the Finance Ministry. Well, you know, I'm a, an author and a researcher in the field of human history and ancient origins of humankind. And unfortunately, or fortunately for me, into that at some stage uh, sooner or later you come across the sudden appearance of money in human history and you start wondering well how did money come about where did this suddenly miraculously appear and start being used a lot of people believe that money is a natural progression evolution that is not the case but i'm not going to go into that right now um, once i started realizing that um, that there's a small number of families that control the supply of money and we can name them, they're the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the Morgans. And they pretty much control the supply of money worldwide. How does that feed into the uh, financial system here in South Africa? So basically, uh, what is the fundamental premise that you feel that you have a case against Standard Bank? Well, on a daily basis, uh, first of all, I don't think there's a single South African. Well, I know there is no single South African and probably nobody in the world that has not been affected by the unscrupulous activities of the banks. When you're talking and about unscrupulous, yeah. drill into, the, into yes. that. Yes, they break the law on a daily basis. In our papers, and as you can see, it's 1,100 pages of argument and legal fact, factual legal uh, case law. Um, it seems to us that at this stage there are about 30, between 30 and 33 laws, acts and bills that are broken on a daily basis by the banks, including the Reserve Bank, and this is all under the watchful eye of the Minister of Finance. So the Minister is aware of what's going on and he's done nothing to prevent this from happening. It's pure exploitation of every South African citizen. Uh, you're basically, one of the arguments I've seen is that you're, you're uh, saying that banks, uh, through issuing new money, are basically fueling inflation, basically uh, issuing new money, printing money, mm. and uh, that isn't backed by assets. But that is really what the financial system has been built on for centuries, you know, leveraging what you have, the assets you do have and deposits you do have. Yeah, that doesn't mean that it's right. Just because it's been happening doesn't mean that it's right. The problem we have is that banks make money out of thin air. Now, I'm not the only one saying this. Stephen Goodson, the shareholder of the Reserve Bank, has been saying that for years now. I've had several meetings with shareholders of the Reserve Bank that, that, that have made some amazing um, re revelations to us as to how the Reserve Bank works, how absolutely deceitful the activities are. Let me just give you some ideas, because a lot of people out there don't really understand why this is and how their lives are affected. Well, their lives are affected dramatically. Um, first of all, the banks make money out of thin air. When I say this, when you go to a bank and you apply for a loan, they don't have vaults of money that they take physical cash and give you a loan. They sit on a computer and they punch in a bunch of numbers on a computer and miraculously, magically just create money out of thin air. It's not backed by anything. We've got this on record from the senior counsel, Shem Simon, that represented the bank in court against me. Now, I've been in the Supreme Court on three occasions in South Africa, defending myself. I didn't have advocates or lawyers. I was there defending myself, arguing against the highest paid lawyers money can buy. And by hook or by crook, we managed to get through all that and now in the Constitutional Court because it's not just about unlawful activity of the banks on a daily basis, and in this case, Standard Bank, but they all do the same thing. It's also about breaking and, and basically breaching all my constitutional rights. It's about my constitutional rights as a human being and a South African citizen that the banks are, are breaking. Okay, so a few questions, but let me start with one of them. Who's backing you right now? Who do you have support uh, from? Well, it's, a, it's been a growing group of people that have figured out the same that I have, that what the banks are doing is unlawful and unconstitutional. And we've been doing our own research. And uh, now, finally, we've been joined by some really smart lawyers and advocates that have offered their work pro bono for free because they realize what's going on is absolutely wrong. This is about economic freedom. We've achieved our political freedom with Nelson Mandela's release and th the actions that followed, but we've never received our economic liberty. So this is about liberating every South African from economic slavery. 
What, why just Standard Bank though? Uh, because why they, not uh, the other banks? Well, ultimately it is uh, the other banks as well. And um, there is a new um, movement that's been set up by a guy called Scott Kundal, and it's called New Era or New Economics Rights Alliance. They are bringing, putting together a whole support group for those that have been abused by banks. So for any of your listeners out there or viewers that feel they've been abused by the banks, please go to thebigcase.co.za and sign the petition because this affects every South African. But you're challenging a global financial system and basically, as I said, you know, a system that has been around for centuries now. Uh, do, you, do you feel that you have a strong enough case to, uh, what is the ultimate, do you feel that you'll be able to win this case with the evidence that you're going to be presenting against Standard Bank? What is the ultimate goal here? Well, uh, the, just to correct you there, this has not really been going on for hundreds of years. This really started with the uh, establishment of the Federal Reserve System in 1913 on Jekyll Island. And uh, when you know, a group of very secretive, uh, powerful individuals got together and set up the Federal Reserve System, the other reserve banks like South African Reserve Bank followed suit. They privately owned institutions. Once again, let me tell your, your, your viewers that the South African Reserve Bank is a privately owned corporation. It answers to nobody. Well, it, it does claim it, it's independent, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. you know they'll be able to come in and have some views on yeah. that. And that, that's the last thing I'd like to end off on. In terms of the finance ministry and the role that the Reserve Bank, you say, is playing in helping banks break the law, yeah. uh, the, why do you have a case against government? Um, well, because the Minister of Finance knows that they're breaking the law. And remember, the Minister of Finance is supposed to be the servant of the people. The Minister of Finance and the entire government is the servant of the what people. What exactly, which law exactly are you saying that uh, government well, is breaking? Well, first of all, the, the, well, the Minister of Finance should have intervened on behalf of the South African citizens and said, sorry, what you're doing is unlawful and unconstitutional and we need to change that. So that's what we're now going to try and force through the Constitutional Court. And what, what this case is going to do, you're quite right, this is a huge thing because ultimately we're going to challenge the Constitutional Court to see how constitutional they really are and will they, will they rule in favour of the South African people and stop supporting through the legal system the banks that have been just exploiting the system. Well, great to have you with us and uh, this obviously is a case we're going to be tracking so best of luck at the courts and uh, we'll much. keep in touch Michael Tellinger, author, researcher and scientist. On that note it's over to David.